So now that we've listened to all the sounds, uh, I figured we, I could run through basics of how to make your own sounds and how all the different parameters work, uh, more or less. So what we have here is what normally an empty patch sounds like. All the same thing, it's kind of just a basic tone. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll go through it and check out some of these different things you can do with it. And this is interesting, you can actually solo just specific parts that you're adjusting. So you're, like for instance, if I just want to adjust the click. So there's nothing right now, but and you can all you're hearing is the click part. And you can change the type of click. So that's just a click. Now if we unsolo that, now you can hear there's more click in it. Maybe too much. Anyway, so that's the click. And we have our tone, and we have noise. So I'll, I'll monkey with the tone, because it's usually, so here you can balance tone and noise, and noise is at zero, obviously, so there's no noise going on. Um, but let's let's mess with the tone a little bit. So we got spectral wave. Um, so wave is the type of tone you're producing. Like the you've got like analog, basic different waveforms. Like and let's just do this again. And this the first one is just like a sine wave, and then you can the second one. A triangle, and you can actually add a second pitch, which is handy for making drum tones because there's usually more than one pitch going on with the real drum. So that's how you manipulate the second pitch. Now, the first, the primary one is over here. So we can change that if I want. Change that one. And under pitch also there's scale presets. So you can actually, <coughs> if you want to edit all, you hit shift and edit all. Now you're doing all of them, but you can pick different. different preset scales um, which can be pretty handy and they're all they'll all be based off of this will be like your first note so if you if you do that and then you change you have them all selected and you change the pitch they all move in relation to each other I clicked everything. Anyway, so that's the two, that's how you get your basic notes. Um, so that if we muck around with some more, you know, it sounds more for percussion. Sounds almost, almost like a <clears throat> vibraphone or something. <clears throat> it's good for cymbals, I guess. FM waves, those are fun. Yeah, so those are some of the basic tones. 
it can get really weird with the FM. And then we have our frequency. So I'm just going to start over again. It's, it's back to where it was because I didn't save it. <clears throat> so anyway, then we've got our frequency dynamic filter. And that just kind of introduces overtones um, based on how hard you're hitting it. So when you have the frequency at zero, that means when you're light, it's got the least amount of overtones going on and that gives you the most room so when you hit it hard you hear more overtones which is why it's at nine but if you change that it just stays the same the whole way but for instance you can add all the overtones right away but then there won't be much change from dynamics so if you get reduce that a bit, you get some more interesting stuff. Anyway, um, decay, pretty straightforward. There's different logarithms and things um, for how long how long your note will sustain. And there's various types. It will have different characters characteristics <laughs> and this one's fun because you can you can set it up so that if you hit it real light it's just gonna be Decay can you can set it so depending on how hard you hit it, uh, it'll decay longer or shorter. It's pretty cool. Pitch bend, so you can set a pitch. You can make it scoop. So you have bend, either from down to up or up to down. Over here, so we could. Um, so if we want to go down. So that's going from a high pitch, really high pitch, down to the principal. And you can change how long that takes over here with the time. Or if we wanted it to bend from below. So you can see how that would be, you can have some fun with that. Um, anyway, so then, uh, so that's pretty much sums up all the tone and the click. Now let's get into the noise filter. So that adds basically like a type of white noise, which you can hear now. We can, if we want to solo it, we can just, so we got resonance and filter type. So that's just picking where the you know the filter cutoff is. You have like high pass and lo low pass. And you have a similar thing for from tone. 
same idea. You use your frequency and dynamic filter so it'll change depending on how you're hitting it. So I'll just keep it flat. More overtones or higher frequency. So that setting, it'll it'll be will change as you hit it. Anyway, that's that. And decay. Again, you know, you can change how long it decays. <laughs> Yeah, so it's you know, different types. Yeah, let's put some click on there too. Okay, and let's hear it. Let's get weird. Yeah, so that's a pretty bizarre sound. Um, you, so you can see how you can go buck wild and make all, I mean, you can do some crazy stuff with this thing. It's not just for drum sounds. Um, and then you got your EQ. So you can like, this side tells you how much you're bumping it or, re or reducing a, a certain frequency. And then this is the frequency. Um, it's not specific, it's not like 50 hertz, but it's, can tell if I boost it. Yeah, so that's your EQ. You've got distortion, which is fun. You have different types. You have your basic normal kind of overdrive and then you've got um, kind of a bit crusher and ringtone modulator which is fun And then um, you can add reverb. So again, you get this button does both reverb and delay. So that's reverb, but you got to turn it on over here and you can pick your type of reverb. So it's like a tile room. And you can sort of EQ the, how the room sounds. So it'll be more highs or lows, depending on where you have that, but you can. It's in a big room. <laughs> and then for delay, we can add some delay in. So this is telling us how much we're sending the, to the delay. And then over here is where we pick the type of delay and the feedback and the rate. Um, So you can slow it down manually. So this is the rate right now. 
But you can also do tap tempo, which is really handy if you're playing and you want to sync it up. So you can, you actually just do hold shift and you hit this, um, or no, you hit the BPM. And now you'll hit this will, will be your tap tempo. So it'll be, and you'll see it'll give you four counts, two, three, four, and now it's set at that rate. So that's really handy for while you're playing. Yeah, and then, you know, you've got noise and tone, which we already went over, and then channel level. So you can pick how loud each pad is, specifically for each patch. And you can also pan it. And that's that's it for the most part. Uh, so you could see how you can you can really get creative and make some wild sounds with it, which I think is really what it where its strength is. You can get pretty out there. It's not just for drum sounds, obviously. Um, yeah, and you can also I forgot you can do a mono group. Where I think if I hold this down, yeah, now they're all linked to each other sort of so if you hit one and then you hit another one the first one will stop unless ex except for the effects the effects will keep going so let's let's try turning off the effects which is handy if you want you know things to not overlap and you could link any pads you want together. It doesn't have to be all of them. You could just link that one and that one if you want. So that's pretty handy. But um, uh, I guess there we go. Now they're not linked anymore. And you can do it. It is polyphonic. I can't remember if I got into that. I mean, as far as you can do any pads at the same time as each other. Um. Yeah, so that about, that sums up pretty much everything. Then you've got, that's how you select your drums. You can also, if you're making your own patch, you can, um, you can just pick through their sort of basic presets so they all have like bass drums you know a variety of different bass drum sounds and snares and then you can monkey with them so it's like a great for starting if you want to have some basic presets and then manipulate those it's pretty makes it really quick um, yeah and you have your toms I had cymbals, percussion stuff. You get the idea. And then um, bells, that kind of stuff. And then tuned percussion. And then effects, so zany sounds. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you, you get the idea. Um, and then you have your user one, so you can make your own sounds and store them. Um, a lot of them. You can make as many. These are all empty. I haven't filled them up. But you can make a lot of your own specific drum tones. 
So this thing is really about being creative and making your own stuff up, I think. And um, complimenting the drum set. Not trying to replace it. Oh, it's got a panic button, just in case stuff gets out of control or something in a live performance, you can just kill it so nothing, everything just shuts up. Yeah, and then you've got your MIDI in, MIDI out, so it's really handy for linking up with a computer. Um, I've used it for demoing songs so you can plug it in so that you're controlling the sounds in a software like, you know, Logic Pro or any of those virtual drums. And it's, they're super dynamic, so it's really nice. You just hook up a kick pedal, and you can, like, you know, track track a whole song just with this through your computer using the sounds built in to your computer. Um, you could obviously also use it to control another brain if you wanted to. Um, or you could control it. You know, through MIDI, there's a ton of different things you can do with, with MIDI with it. One of the things I figured out, because this obviously only has one kick, it only has one trigger input, but I actually figured out a way to hook up more triggers through MIDI by just getting like a MIDI brain like this, uh, this D drum makes one. One of these guys. So by so this just takes trigger input and then you know poops out MIDI or USB. So you can plug all your triggers, put your triggers on your drums, plug them into this, and then connect this to the Nord. And then you can custom set every trigger to be specific different pads or notes. You can even have your triggers be different pitches than what the pads are. So it's pretty it's pretty interesting. So if you wanted more than just one trigger with this, you know, you could just get one of these guys and it's it's only like 150 bucks, I think. And then you can have, you know, you can only really have six triggers going on, I think, because there's only six sounds in this at the same time. But you can obviously have a lot more than six. And you can use that with your computer too.